It is the end of week one and the latest civil damages trial against conservative talk show host Alex Jones. Soon, a jury in Connecticut is going to decide how much money he and his company are going to have to pay the families of Sandy Hook victims for lying about the 2012 school massacre. The jury heard testimony from a woman who works for Alex Jones who admitted that false statements were made about that shooting for the purpose of getting more viewers and getting more money. CNN's Bryn Gingras has that story. Yeah, it was an emotional start to this trial in Connecticut where we heard from an FBI agent as well as at least one family member uh, of those Newtown families who lost loved ones in that horrific, horrific massacre school shooting back in 2012. Now, most of this trial so far this week was really uh, listening to Brittany Paz on the stand. She spent more than 15 hours over the last few days. She is the company spokesperson for Free Speech Systems, which is the company owned by Alex Jones. And the plaintiff's attorneys basically brought her onto the stand to kind of debunk many of the theories that Alex Jones has sort of put out there, whether it be talking about the fact that the massacre was a hoax in general to the fact that they never used used Google Analytics as a company uh, to the fact that some of the parents and the kids who were killed were crisis actors. I want you to take a listen to an exchange that happened this week uh, between the plaintiff's attorney and Ms. Paz. Is Ben Wheeler an actor? Yes. No, Free Speech Systems doesn't contend that he is. Is Abiel Richmond an actor? No. Is Dylan Hockley an actor? No. Is Daniel Barden an actor? No. Is Emily Parker an actor? No. Is Bill Aldenberg an actor? No. And so you can see right there, it was such an emotional moment in the courtroom where the camera panned to some of the families that were sitting there. And uh, courtroom reporter Aaron Cooper says that they were crying and that tissues have been being handed out really all throughout this trial, this emotional week. But again, the plaintiff's attorney there debunking uh, this theory that Alex Jones keeps bringing up that this Newtown massacre uh, was a hoax using videos, using spreadsheets, using number of means to make that point with this specific um, person's testimony. Now, she is going to again be back on the stand next week when court gets started. But then after that, eventually we should be hearing Alex Jones um, himself on the stand when the defense gets their turn up. Uh, but this trial is expected to last several weeks. And again, remember, this jury is deciding how much money in damages these eight families, along with an FBI agent, should receive from Alex Jones for all of these lies that were spread about what happened in Newtown, Connecticut. Back to you. Here with us now to discuss this further is CNN legal analyst and criminal defense attorney Joey Jackson. So, Joey, my first question for you is how do the plaintiff's attorneys actually go about showing that these families were materially damaged directly because of what Jones said? How does the jury put a dollar amount on the damage? Yeah, Whitney, good morning to you. I, I think they're starting that process. The first way you do it is through the opening statements by showing that lies have consequences. We're talking about an event that occurred 10 years ago or will be 10 years in December where people died, children died, 20 in fact, and then you had additionally educators who died on top of that, several. And this was not a hoax. It was not a lie. There were not uh, actors by the government or anything else. And so why am I saying that? I'm saying that because that resonates into or resonates, excuse me, into the fact that this was materially false statements that were being made over and over that really translated into damages, impairing reputations, uh, really opening up emotional wounds, and really leading to harassment of people. And so first, when you get through that part, Whitney, with respect to conveying to the jury what this was all about, which the jurors certainly will know based upon the witness testimony, then you get to the impact that it had. And then the jury has to translate that into how should we compensate these families? How should we, as we look there, 
the, the damages, the jury deciding how much Alex Jones's his company should pay, the 15 plaintiffs who represent eight victims, et cetera. But ultimately, what the jury has to do is quantify in their own way how the families were impaired and what the specific monetary measure should be to compensate for their impairment based upon the really lies that were told and the profits that were made by the company of Alex Jones as a result. Uh, Joey, this is the second of three trials. The first trial in Texas resulted in uh, a nearly $50 million judgment against Alec jo Alex Jones. And so I'm wondering if you think that this trial will result in the same way. I mean, did he, after he saw the result of the Texas case, could he have said, okay, clearly this is not going my direction and I'm just going to settle with these people? How, how do you expect all of this to play out? And, and do you anticipate he might just settle the third case? So what happens is, is that what, what we have to distinguish, Whitney, here is, of course, liability from damages. He, in fact, already has been found responsible. That's the liability part. But he didn't, wasn't found responsible based upon any jury trial. He and his team decided not to cooperate, not to transfer and hand over critical information that the families would need in order to really move forward in the case. As a result of that, this is a default. A default is, for example, two teams are scheduled to, you know, play with each other, for example. One doesn't show up. One wins by default, right? Far different. Nothing about a game here, but just making the point that this is a default based upon him not engaging. And so his strategy to your question has been not to engage. This portion of the trial is about damages. You've already lost. You've already been determined liable by default. Now it's about how much you will pay. I don't suspect any settlement based upon the fact that he's been trying to really engage in bankruptcy filings and dilatory tactics and not, not otherwise cooperating. And so a settlement would mean that he would have to agree to pay a specific monetary amount. His play here, based upon not engaging at all, has been to avoid this situation and try through bankruptcy and other measures not to be accountable. So I don't suspect that there'll be a settlement here, nor do I suspect that there'll be a settlement in the case that's to come thereafter.